there, I'm Tracy Tim, and I'm the founder of the Nth Degree Academy, a proven program that helps go-getter, high-potential young professionals find work that they love. Not just any career, but a career that makes them rich in every sense of the word, financially and through freedom and through fulfillment. So I'm so excited to have you here today because we're talking to one of our rock stars uh, who has worked with me personally and we've gone through this program methodology together uh, and he's had some really incredible outcomes. So I'm so excited to share his story with you today. So I want to welcome Patrick. Thank you so much for being here. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, so excited. This has just been a long time coming and you're just one of my favorite stories to tell. So now we're going to tell everybody. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind, just introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about your background and how you got here. Sure. I am Patrick McDonough. I am an electrical engineer by trade, I guess you'd say. Um, I went to school for electrical engineering and I had a couple of different jobs in electrical engineering, but... Uh, I never really felt that that was exactly what I wanted to do, so um, I started working with Tracy to figure out exactly what it was I wanted to do, and she was able to help me help me get there. So I lived in Dallas for the past five years, recently relocated to Kansas City, and have just recently had some good news of finding a new job. Yes! I love it! Um, I'm so excited. We're going to dig into the offer that you got and how like well suited you are for this job because that was something that we worked on together but what do you remember exactly what was going on in your life when you realized ah, this really isn't for me and I think I need some help really defining with clarity what that is and what my next step is going to be sure I uh, I was kind of at a point in my career where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do but I knew that what I was doing wasn't it so I was looking to to figure out what I could do that was actually going to make me happy and not just make me money. Um, and so it was, it was really, um, you know, I was doing stuff that I had done before. It was stuff I was comfortable doing, but I didn't really enjoy what I was doing on a day to day basis. Yeah. And you were good at it too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. great at it. That but was, it just wasn't what I wanted to spend my time doing. Yeah, that was the most interesting thing to me when we started working together was a lot of people come to me and say, I'm just not getting the success that I want or that I'm looking for. I feel like I'm putting my square peg in a round hole. Like, you were in a great place to have been successful because you were good at it. And oh, yeah. the world needs it and you're getting paid to do it. But you just didn't have that, like, zeal and excitement about it, right? Right. I, was, I wasn't excited about what I was getting to do. Yeah. So I remember um, when you and I connected, you had said something specifically about um, your wife, Carrie, who was trying to help you through this. And she's asking you questions. And, and she said, I just don't know what to ask him anymore. Right? Yes. So, yes, that was exactly it. It was, was figuring that? out the right questions to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was that like for you guys working through it together and then kind of realizing, oh, maybe we need some like third party input on this? Um, it was good, but it was also a little frustrating because... Um, you know, we both don't have that background of, of digging into figuring out what it is somebody wants to do. So, um, you know, like you said, we tried to ask ask the right questions, but we never were able to get the definitive answer, get to the right place. So finally, you know, I was talking with you uh, when we were playing softball about like what you were doing and stuff like that. And so um, it just kind of clicked that, hey, that's, that's really the questions that I need to ask myself. And it'd be a great resource to work with you to uh, to figure out what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. So had you tried anything previously, really, besides talking to people that you trusted or your family and friends? Like, Were there other things that you reached out to try and solve this problem for yourself? Not really. Um, I, had, I mean, I looked at job postings to see. It's kind of <laughs> trying to fit the hole to the peg, like yep. looking at job postings to see what I wanted to do and see if that was the right fit for me. Yep. But um, it never... It never really clicked going from back to front. It worked a lot better going front to back. Yeah, oh my gosh. So I just did a really, um, I'm excited because it's going to go live in a couple weeks, a video on this exact thing where job postings are really the last place that we want to go once yep. we have right all the clarity as to what we're even looking for. And when you try to do it in reverse, you end up spending, I mean, hours. I remember this, and I know you talked about it too, spending hours of time getting more and more miserable and more and more in your own head because nothing that you see on those boards like sounds like you, sounds exciting, looks interesting, and you're hoping that it's just going to jump out at you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I applied for those positions. I went 
on the interviews, I, I got job offers. Um, I think I was telling you, I got a job offer at a plant that makes bullets. And so that's, that's like, we, we talked through what I'm passionate about and everything. Like that is the farthest thing from what I'm passionate about. And they'd be doing even less of what I do now. Like none of the creative work, um, but, and, and making bullets, which I have no passion for. I'm not the big <laughs> redneck hunter guy, you know, you know, like, yeah. uh, so, so that's yeah, the, that's like one of the the worst offers that I got was yeah. making bullets. But you were doing, so so I just want people to understand, like you were doing the things that you thought were right to figure this out yes. for yourself, right? And, yeah. and for most of us, that is going to job boards. And that is just applying because we think like, well, maybe this will be better. And maybe if I'm making more money there, that'll justify the fact that like I'm not that passionate about bullets or, yeah. or whatever you're, you know, you're on paper. I was the perfect candidate for that role because I had all of the experience they wanted. I just did not want to do that job though. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is like we waste so much time because you've gone all the way down the road of applying and interviewing and whatever. And, and then even that company is losing time and money and, and offer money like yeah. interviewing you and you had no intention of really doing that job. So, um, so then after that, uh, I mean, at that point, like when we first started working together, like how were you feeling? Was it frustration? Were you just like tired of it all, or what? What was your mindset coming into all of it? When when we first started working together, I was pretty optimistic um, because we had a relationship already. I, I trusted you. I knew what you were about, and I knew that you would be able to help me. So I was optimistic. It's kind of like when you like you're not feeling well, yeah. and you schedule that doctor's appointment. You're like, all right, I know I'm going to get better. It was that kind of thing where it was like, I know that this is going to help me in some way, whether it totally fixes the problem or yeah. whether it just pushes me in the right direction. It's going to be better than doing nothing. Oh, totally. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Or just or just spinning my wheels. Yeah, that's the biggest compliment, right? You're better yeah. than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah, and to your point, you know, it's taking action is always our better route because insight's not going to come from the job board or just trying to go through it in your head over and over and over again. So, right. but a lot of people have like a, you know, a barrier or a mental block on like reaching out for help in this kind of oh, scenario. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you don't know what you want to do. You don't feel like as shiny and awesome as you want to feel. And so you kind of keep it all to yourself. Yeah. Um, was there? Did you ever feel like that, or what would you say to somebody who's feeling like that and afraid to take action? Um, I don't know that I ever felt like that, but that's because I trusted you and already had a, a good relationship with you. Um, to somebody who who doesn't have that relationship with you already, mm -hmm. I would I would just say like take a chance or reach out and um, form that relationship ahead of time, or just connect with you ask a few questions and, and get a get a grasp on what you're all about because that's how I was able to to trust you is knowing what you were all about and knowing that this wasn't some scam that was going to just be a money maker for you and I'm going to get left in the same spot right, uh, right. knowing that you had you had an investment in me uh, was was huge yeah absolutely and that's how you know we approach the program now it's like I'm all in and I'm not just trying to get clients. Like it might sound cheesy or cliche, but like I want success stories. It doesn't right. do me any good <laughs> to have people funneling through the program and not getting what they want out of it. So um, right. that's why, again, I've, I've always been so proud and excited about your results because I think that you really dug in and went like both feet in from the get-go. And I, I just always loved your positivity and your mindset around yeah. being open to learning. And, and I think that's really contributed a lot to, to your success. So Yeah. It was always really obvious that you wanted, you would rather have five 100% than 105%. Or like in the middle, like, you know what I mean? Like you, I you wanted total success for a small number of people more than moderate success for a large number of people. So that's what really drew me to working with you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, so when we first started to work together and we were kind of reframing some of your mindset around, again, sort of not putting the horse 
you know, the cart before the horse, but really getting things back in order and really digging into your clarity and your mindset. Um, what were some of the first changes that you started to see in your concept of career and in yourself? I, I started to realize that there were other options out there. Um, and that, that sounds silly to say, like, no. of, course, of course there are other options out there. Yeah, but when you're but, in it, you know, you're just in it and you forget that there's all these right. other options. Yeah, that makes total sense. And so when we first started working together, I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in engineering. I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in software. I, I really wasn't sure what was going to make me happy. I was kind of aimless. And so um, the first the first shifts that I really saw was really having that confidence. Like, yes, I'm, I'm good at this. There are parts of this that I really enjoy. I was figuring out what I really enjoyed. Uh, and that even gave me a boost in my my job that I wasn't really doing, wasn't really enjoying that much was, you know, here are the things that I like doing, so I'm going to focus more time on that if I can. Uh, and so that was great. And it was also one of the, the great things that we did was when you had me uh, ask questions of people around me, like what do they think of me, like the different opinions of me. Yep. Uh, or the, the, was it the three qualities of yes, me? Yeah, your three best, yeah. three best things about Patrick. Three best <laughs> three things about Patrick. That was um, really, really gratifying to get to hear those answers and just like get to hear what people think of you because that's such a – like in, in our society, you don't ask for feedback from people you're close to. You ask for feedback from people who are paying you or uh, like that. But They have like no stake in you and your life. They're like right. you know, colleagues or professors or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But getting feedback from people who – you assume already have good feedback for you, but then to hear them actually say that was super gratifying. Like that was just kind of like good boost. Like, all right, I'm an actually good person. I'm actually a good person. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good at things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was one year where my mom actually, she's like notorious for giving me like motivational self-help stuff for Christmas, mm -hmm. and one year she got me a book that said, I am good at things, that was the title of the book, and it's all these <laughs> things you put through, it's like, you woke up this morning, good for you, <laughs> um, so I totally get that, but it's, it's, it's funny, and we laugh about it, but that, in that moment, when you're going through so much confusion, and you don't know your next step, and so you're lacking just general clarity, and, the, and thus then confidence in yourself, to see that other people still see the best in you. And then yeah. you can leverage that in your career and in your life and do more of those things going forward, especially if you're good at them and you like doing yeah. them. Um, that, I mean, in addition to being gratifying, I mean, that was probably really edifying as well. Like, I am I am great at, at oh, yeah. those things. So that's fantastic. I love it. Was there yeah. anything that happened then along the way that was unexpected for you? I guess I didn't expect to, to perform that exercise. Mm. Um, yeah. I didn't expect the I didn't expect leaning on external people. Uh, um, yeah. So I expect it to be a conversation between uh, you and me, or conversations that I would have with Carrie. Uh, but I didn't uh, I didn't expect to lean on outside resources like that. Yeah. Uh, and so that was it was it was tough to do initially because, like you said, people don't ask for help. Mm -hmm. So. So to take that first jump and to ask a couple people right off the bat, like, all right, what are the three best characteristics about me? What are the three best things about Patrick? Uh, that was that was the hardest part. But then once the first couple came back positive, and I was like, all right, I can do this. Let's go. <laughs> let's go out and lean on everybody I can. I think you said do like twenty people. I did like twenty three. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that, I think, also helped you when we moved into sort of the marketing and pitching your idea to other people and finding these potential opportunities for yourself um, to have that amount of confidence that not only are you going to get some kind of positive feedback, but that people want to help you. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And it's sad, it's sad for me that we don't reach out to other people who can really help solve our problems in the moment that we need them the most, we just, we have a tendency to back away. Um, yeah. I feel like that part of the, the program is so important to push people towards, obviously outside of your comfort zone, but towards the support system that they've already built. And then the one that, that is 
sort of encircling that support system that, that would love to help you, they just don't know how. Yeah. And I think that's kind of uh, a generational thing, where it's kind of our generation that's like that, that, yeah. have, that feels like they don't have... Uh, they don't have the ability to lean on their support system. Uh, I feel like, I feel like the younger good. generations are starting to realize that they, they have places that they can go, that they can talk to people, and um, they realize that they can leverage their friends to, uh, to help them. But I think our generation is really struggling with that. I think so, too. And I think particularly here in the US, right? Like there's such a demand or, or a, like a, an ethos of independence and like, making a name for yourself, and if you didn't do it alone, like, was it as good of an accomplishment or not? Right. Well, and everything's so competitive. Yeah. It's so competitive that if you reach out to somebody, that person could use that to take advantage of you. Like, uh, they could use that to get a leg up on you. Like, oh, well, they're not, they don't think that they're feeling great, or they're, they don't think that they're doing the best job they can, so yeah. maybe I can jump in and do the best job or whatever. I don't know. It's... <laughs> Yeah, no, and we constantly yeah. compare ourselves to other people, right? And if you're yeah. reaching out because you feel behind and then that person confirms that fact, right, it makes you not want to do that, which right. could be the same reason that somebody wouldn't reach out for help in this case, right? Like somebody will right. see you and see the results that you have and be like, I want to be Patrick, which I don't know who wouldn't say that, but <laughs> they could, right? And they can still be like, but I, I don't know if I trust that. Um, she's not going to take advantage of this or that I'm not going to feel good about myself when I think you're sitting here on the other side of those fears or insecurities and saying like, it's so nice over here. Like, come on, like just yeah. jump over. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's totally worth it. So that's why I, I just am so excited for you. So, yeah. um, as we were working together, what was it like particularly, working with me because now in the program you know that's a huge part of, of mm -hmm. our feedback loop there's a lot of accountability we have multiple group calls every week so help people understand like what it was like for us two to work together specifically just for us I mean we had a relationship already so it was a little bit easier I think mm -hmm. uh, but to work together you really did challenge me a lot so you asked a lot of tough questions and like you said, I was, I was open to answering questions, but it was questions I didn't have a quick or a good answer for right away. Um, and it was questions that I really hadn't thought about. So having that, that openness, the, the trust was pretty big to be able to sit there and yeah. you know, have that silence in the conversation while I was thinking, you know, what, what do I want to do or what does make me happy about the certain things? So, yeah. uh, what are my commitments? What are my core values? Those types of things. Um, you know, to work through those, it's, it's tough because there's not a right answer. That's the, that's the disconnect I had between our work and like engineering. It's because engineering is a right answer. There's a right way to do something. Yeah. Um, uh, but when it comes to this, it's not necessarily a right or a wrong answer. It's what's gonna what's gonna give you the best results. Yeah. So how did you so work through on yourself? Making, yeah. How did you work on making that switch then to just say it doesn't have to be right per se in the I don't know academic or engineering sense, but it's right for me. Um, yeah. So it was it was actually a really interesting experience because it wasn't about getting the result right away. It was about getting the bigger result. So if you're willing to make yourself more vulnerable and, and really think about what your true core values are or your true, what your true answer is, not just something that's going to get the question over quickly. <laughs> if, you, if you think, if you spend the time, it's like an investment. Like if you invest that time and the energy and opening yourself up to those questions, you're going to get the return of having the process actually work and not just getting through the process. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah. There's so many, because I mean, we aren't, our generation, I think too, isn't ever really forced to do that ever. Like even in, even in school, like let's, let's use, you know, our entire formal education, for example, like,
you can get great grades without being really invested in what you're learning. Oh, yeah. And honestly, without even learning anything, right? Because you study mm-hmm. the test, you pass it, you move on to the next class, and you've completely forgotten what you learned in world history because now you're in U.S. history, whatever, mm-hmm. right? So uh, your insight there is really, really great because what you're saying is this is a different type of exercise where you're not just going through the motions to get to the end of the program. You're actually like resting and sitting with the really challenging things, the really difficult things, and finally making answers for yourself about what makes you happy and about what success looks like for you and the type of lifestyle that you really want to live and then owning that. Yeah. It was like, I don't remember what the, the book, there's like a book, the obstacle is the path or something oh. like that. Or like, it's the, <laughs> the process itself, not necessarily the end result is what, yeah. what makes you grow. Yeah, and I think that a lot of what we worked on together and a lot of what's in the the program now are things that you can repeat over and over throughout your life, right? So you just got this really great offer, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, But as your life goes on and maybe, you know, when you and Carrie have kids or if you move again or if your parents are closer, there are all kinds of things change in our life to the point where we would need to reassess our core values and, and change our commitments to fit the life that we want then while still working towards another life that we're aspiring to. Mm-hmm. Right? Just super yeah. So, so you're equipped for life. <laughs> I, am, I am equipped. I have all the tools. Okay, so tell me then what your biggest insights were from the course as far as into you and what you wanted out of a career and how that now is translating to this new job that you're that you got an offer for yes. and he's going to pay you bank. I'm so excited. You have to tell everybody so, about that too. The biggest takeaway was figuring out how to talk about what I was looking for in a career. Ah. So it's figuring out how to ask people the right questions, um, but also knowing knowing what questions to ask to get to um, to get to what basically what I wanted to do. Okay. So when we sat down and we worked together, we figured out that. Um, I worked best in a team of really talented people, um, you know, that are, that are joined together for the goal of creating some really innovative solutions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so to be able to talk to people, uh, when I'm networking with people, just asking them, you know, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, uh, I'm not looking to be the, the one person. I'm looking for a structured environment with, a, with, with, Flexibility involved, but mostly structure to where, uh, you know, it's, it's smart people. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I like to try to be the smartest person in the room, but I don't <laughs> like to have to be the smartest person in the room. Like, um, so to be able to work with a group of people and, and have the common goal of creating the best product. Uh, and that was another thing we talked about was product versus project mm-hmm. work. Um, that it's, you helped me realize that I I like to see the results manifested in something physical, whether that's actually physical or like software or things like that. But, um, to be able to see the results in the form of a product versus a project, Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, there's a big difference there. And that was one of the, the main things that kind of pushed me in the right direction as well. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what people might not realize is, what you just did is not easy because you took your core values and what matters the most to you and your commitments and then what you're naturally good at and what you've learned how to do over time, which all comes together to create your unique you know, niche in the marketplace. But then when you know that, which is A, an awesome moment when you have that clarity, right? You're right. like, this is really what I want. Like, I remember that. Like, the light bulb comes on. You're yes. like, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. Yes. I remember that day with you when you were just like, I, I know what it is. And, and yeah. honestly, like, when you've had that feeling, you know what the before and after feels like. And you're like, I never want to feel like the before again because it's terrible. Uh, right. But you, right? So you have your little nugget, and, but then it's sharing it with the world so that you can actually find those opportunities because you can't type into Google working with smart people on a product making, you know, whatever in a creative, yeah. right? Like you can't, you can't take people out of the, out of the process once you get to that phase. And I remember very vividly you and I working together on what we called like your pitch. 
and you refined it every time you learned something new from somebody and that hit, to hit a light bulb, you refined it and then you gave the new version to the next person and the next person. And, and that's really led to where you are today, which um, you have like this ideal job offer. So talk about that. Yes. So uh, I guess my technical position is going to be director of software development or software engineering uh, for Meshify. Uh, they, they have an Internet of Things platform that connects sensors, um, devices, equipment, everything to the cloud. Uh, it allows people to monitor those devices, to get alerts, to react to certain things. So I will be leading the, the development team. So I'll have a team of front-end developers. Um, they do everything that makes the website look pretty. A team of back-end developers, and they do everything that makes it actually work when you click on the buttons and things like that. Uh, and store the data, all that infrastructure. Um, so I'll be leading uh, the development teams as, as a product manager type role. So cool. Uh, yeah, so cool. it's great. It's, it's going to be an awesome uh, awesome job. I'm so excited to get started on it. Um, it it's great. And don't bury the lead, but they're paying you more than you're making now, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was. I went into this expecting uh, to take at least somewhat of a pay cut, mm -hmm. but um, just knowing knowing my my value, I was able to to get a little bit of a raise coming out of this. So That's yeah, it's, right. yeah. See, I'm telling you, everybody, their first mindset is like, oh, you want me to be a starving artist, aka like doing what I love means giving up the lifestyle that I have or money in general. And like, no, I am not trying to create yeah. an army of, of impoverished people who love what they do. Like, no, that's not right. the idea here. The idea is that if you love it and you're good at it, you will command premium value in the marketplace. You just will, yeah. right? Well... Well, there's that other, so I went on another interview, and I loved the position, I loved the team, um, but they're like, okay, let's pay you less than you made coming out of college. Like, Holy cow, this is, <laughs> I can't live on that. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. Didn't have to settle for that, right? Right. You stayed the course, know your value, and continue to look for your ideal solution. Um, right. So It's not to say that wasn't really tough, or wasn't really, like, I get really disappointed when things like that happened yeah. because I got so invested in the, the position. I got so excited about it that uh, it's kind of a punch in the stomach. Like, oh, man, I really wanted that, but you know, they're, not, they're not seeing the value in me. How did you keep your mindset positive and continuing to work the process and work the plan that we put in place when you came up against roadblocks and stuff like that? Um, it, it was easier for me because I, I was already in a, a good position. I was in a job where I could get my day to day. Um, I was getting paid, so I wasn't desperate, mm -hmm. which was which was pretty crucial to me being patient and sticking it out through the letting the process do the work. Yeah, because I feel like if I would have like if I didn't have a job and I needed to go somewhere, I would have probably settled for something. Uh, a lot less. I would have settled for making bullets or something like that. But, uh, but yeah. It, it, so it was, it was the ability to be patient that let me kind of sit back and wait for the right opportunity. Yeah, uh, and and probably the clarity with which you have worked through the entire process. Like I remember you told me that you told your new employer that we had worked together, and they were mm -hmm. impressed that you had invested in yourself invested in figuring out what you were uniquely best almost like bred to do, right? And that yeah. that aligned with what they had to be done. Like that's an employer's dream. Somebody right. comes in who's like gung-ho, this is what they want to do with their life and their career. And oh, by the way, that's what I'm hiring for. Like that's a, that's a win. Yeah. Um, but you're, you're so right. It can be really challenging if you don't have that clarity and you don't have that confidence in yourself and your value, which comes from, not having a plan and not having worked through what your real values and your real worth really is, right. um, it can be so easy to give up and not stay the course. So I'm so proud yeah, absolutely. of you. You did. <laughs> Thank um, you. So tell me now, like, how your life? Um, how's your life different 
on this side of things and, um, you know, and how you feel and how you're, you are with your friends, your family, et cetera. Like how have things changed positively for you? Um, so I'm still waiting for things to actually change. I haven't started the new role yet. Right. Um, but definitely my, my outlook has changed, um, especially since, you know, since going through the process, mm -hmm. um, just knowing, knowing that there were things out there that I really wanted to do. Um, and you helped me kind of get started on looking for the right types of things. And so once I realized that, you know, there are these opportunities out there, I got really excited about going out and finding where these opportunities were. Yeah. Um, and so that was really the biggest thing was being able to, being able to talk about what I wanted, open that up to, hey, I'm going to go talk to these people and see if they know what I want to do. I just felt more excited about the search. Yeah. Yeah, because you know. Like, once you know, you just want to share it with people. Right. And, and it kind of gave me a, a theoretical light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. to where it's like, all right, I know where I need to get. Yeah. I just need to, to go through the networking process and, you know, figuring out where I want to – figure out the right way to get to – the light at the end of the tunnel so that I can get to where I want to be. Perfect. I love it. So what would you say to somebody who has watched this all the way to the end and is thinking like, oh, I'm like I don't really like my job or I don't know what I want to do and they're considering, you know, hopping on a call with me or going through the program, what would you tell them? Uh, I would say if you don't love your job, if you're not 100% invested in what you're doing, if you're not excited about it, it's worth looking into what else is out there. Uh, it doesn't have to be a job change. It could just be a mentality change. But it's worth going through the process to figure out what's actually going to make you happy, whether that's on a career level or personal. It's worth figuring out what it's going to take to get you to not get you back to zero, like get you above, get you to 110%, get you better than, better than baseline. Yes! From stuck to unstoppable, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Patrick. I know so many people are going to be inspired by your story. Um, I know I, I always am, and you, I just cherish our time that we worked together and how invested you were um, and how you just went all in because that's the key to all of this, and I think that's the key to success in anything in life is to – if you if you're going to do it, do it. Like make your yes yeah. a yes. And you did that, and I think you totally reaped the benefits of it. I know Carrie was super happy with you and your whole demeanor and your mindset change and, and everything that's that this has done for you and your life overall. So um, if this sounds interesting to you guys and you want to schedule a call with me, we're now offering free clarity calls. All you need to do is go to tracytim.com slash clarity. We'll hop on the phone for about an hour and I will help you, I promise, figure out exactly what's keeping you stuck, what's going to make you feel unstoppable, and help you create a step-by-step -step plan to go from A to B. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to learn more about this program or you just want to take advantage of this free call, please go to tracytim.com slash clarity. So Patrick, thank you so much for being here. You're a joy and, uh, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Da-da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're so good.